welcome to Procontation Points Video Snark. I'm making my way through Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. If you haven't seen the other videos about the book, please make sure that you do or else you might be confused. Links will be posted below. Chapter 23. The Conjurers are at Little Ilford Cemetery in London, 8th of October, 1888. Audrey goes to the funeral of one of Jack's latest victims, after an interlude to describe what Audrey is wearing. Because one has the book ever passed up on an opportunity to do that, she gets around to talking about the victim. Apparently, the lady had been detained by the police for public intoxication in the night of her murder. She was released from their custody around 1 a.m., and Jack found her not too long after. But also, since Uncle has been released, the police are going back to him for advice. And it sounds like the detectives are doing a lot of bootlicking over the entire thing. Audrey is also still on board with, maybe Thomas did it. Audrey identifies a shifty looking fellow at the funeral, but we don't actually return to that just yet. It starts to rain and Thomas with the umbrella has to stand close to Audrey so that she won't get wet. We also establish that the people of the city pulled together to give the victim a proper funeral and burial. Just as Audrey is looking at the lady's grave, Thomas pulls her attention back to the aforementioned shifty fellow. They go over, and Audrey is about ready to introduce herself, but the guy seems to know who she is, but more importantly, who her mother is. Ah yes, daughter of Melina and Edmund. Your mother says that you're welcome to the necklace and the photograph, the heart-shaped locket, I believe. Yes, yes, he said, nodding again. That's right, the one you admired in your father's study. It's been used as a bookmark of sorts. Uh Audrey is naturally on edge. She had thought about the locket, but hadn't mentioned it to literally anybody. Thomas warns her not to get so worked up. The man introduces himself as a seer. Thomas all but laughs over the prospect of this. The man goes on to say that the spirit of the victim has been talking with him every night for the past week to urge him to help people who will bring Jack down. He says he was drawn to Audrey because her mother's spirit kept talking to him. He understands that Audrey is a skeptic and offers to do some more to her to prove that he isn't some fraud. He promises that the worst that could happen would be that nothing happens and that she has a dumb story to tell everybody later. And the best? Obviously, if he is what he claims to be, then it could get some first-hand perspective from at least one of the victims. And, like, I've seen enough crime dramas to say that there's always one psychic who shows up and says creepy stuff like this. But I'm legit going to scream if this thinly turns from a more or less historically accurate work of fiction to something more supernatural, with no warning whatsoever. Thomas asks why the man hadn't gone to Scotland Yard with this info if he actually does have info on Jack. The answer is simply that nobody there believes him, and it's gotten to the point where none of the officers won't even give him the time of day. Audrey, however, knows that part of science is exploring all and any avenues. And despite the fact that there's two new bodies with new evidence, and Jack apparently getting bolder with each killing, she still feels like they're stuck. Plus, she kind of wants to hear stuff from her mom. At the man's house, Thomas seems anxious. Audrey isn't sure if it's because of his secrets might soon be exposed or something else. The man spends a moment telling Audrey about the various things lying about the room which he uses to help communicate with the spirits. It's boring and pointless, much like half of the story. I will die mad about that gravy scene. They eventually get to the seance, and the victim whose funeral that they just left starts to speak to Mr. Lee again. He says that Audrey was present the morning her body was discovered, and she was with a light-haired man, which describes Blackburn. However, none of this rules out Mr. Lee having also been at the crime scene, or just making a stab in the dark like Audrey originally guessed about what he said about her mother's necklace. Mr. Lee goes on to say that the victim had an identifying mark on her body and Audrey would know what it was, which she does, the victim had a tattoo, but it was also on her arm and just about anybody could have seen it, so Audrey isn't impressed. But then Lee says that Jack was there that morning too, that Audrey had spoken with him, and that Audrey was angry with him, which doesn't narrow down the suspect pool at all because she's currently angry with her father, her brother, and Blackburn. Despite how Audrey had been in the middle of a quarrel with Thomas that morning, she seems to think that this clears Thomas of any wrongdoing, which maybe she was just looking for some excuse to find him not guilty of all of this. I don't think that the words of a quote-unquote psychic would magically clear her suspicion of Thomas. 
Mr. Lee then starts to rock back and forth before issuing an ominous warning that Jack wants Audrey dead and to leave London at once. Oh no. The teaser picture between chapters is a handwritten old letter entitled From Hell Letter and dated 1888. And I... nope. Not going to attempt to read that. To badly paraphrase one of my college professors, ain't nobody got time for reading your bad handwriting. I looked it up online, and it's apparently a letter claiming to be from the real Jack the Ripper, so I guess that those letters actually are real? Hmm, yeah, I might get curious from time to time, but I don't have time or energy to research every little thing. Chapter 24 From Hell, Dr. Jonathan Wadsworth Library, Highgate, 16th of October, 1888 Many days have passed both since Audrey left her family home for good, but also since the creepy prediction from Mr. Lee. True to his word, Father didn't seek me out, remaining indifferent to my whereabouts. It was so unlike him, letting me out of his sight for days on end, but he'd become a stranger to me, and I couldn't predict his next moves. I don't know. It just sounds like a standard young adult parent to me. When he actually does bother to show up, he's unreasonable to the point of insane. At least this book came up with a good excuse for the first time that he left. Now it just seems like the author drew ideas from a hat. Her father kicked her out from the house. Because reasons. She told Thomas about her suspicions that her father was Jack. Thomas didn't have much to say on the matter, which Audrey found rather telling. Aside from the fact that her father had connections to all of the older victims, no word yet on the two new ones, and, but now there's another one. Jack's killing both stopped and then started up again in time with his leaving town. However, there's one person that she's keeping all of this from, Nathan L. Thomas then chides Audrey for, and I quote, moping about. And then the conversation turns to Audrey's moral dilemma. Should she turn her father in? At this point, he's been nothing but cruel to her, and long before the story started, he's gone behind her back to arrange unsuitable courtships offers for her, and neither of those parties bothered to tell her. Furthermore, he's kicked her from the house. She may not want him dead, but jeez, Audrey, the man has done you no favors. And at the end of the day, Audrey's moral scales can't seem to balance out between more women being brutally slain and her father being hung for what he did. And it's like, how do you even look at those two options and not immediately say, he's a murderer, he deserves to be punished for what he did? While they're talking it out, but ultimately going in circles, somebody comes in to say that Uncle has requested their presence in Scotland Yard. A box was delivered to Scotland Yard, and it was half a kidney. Uncle seems to think that it belongs to one of the victims since she was missing hers, and the state of decomp is about right. I swallowed down my disgust. Jack was coming undone, it seemed. How? How do you sit on the knowledge that your own father could be this kind of sicko and continue to let him do this? But then as she's thinking about it, she looks to Blackburn. She thinks that maybe Blackburn might be her father's accomplice, which, considering the underhanded deal to court Audrey, nothing would surprise me about Blackburn at this point. There's also another letter, which is... The letter printed in the in-between chapter image. Just, you know, legible. Sort of. The spelling is really miserable, but it's pretty much copy-pasted from the Wikipedia page. The letter is addressed to somebody named Mr. Lusk. Audrey says that he's part of Nathan L's group, but this is literally the first time that we're hearing about him. Talk about pulling nonsense out from thin air. Jack also claims to have eaten the other half of the kidney, and Audrey says that that's a no-no, even for him. She also notes that the handwriting doesn't look like her father's, but that doesn't mean that he isn't trying to hide who he is or anything. But there's just one flaw in Audrey's thinking. If her father is killing these girls as some weird way to bring his dead wife back, why eat part of the kidney? Uncle also seems to think along the same lines. And the reason why Jack ate the kidney was because Jack realized that he'd gotten too many kidneys and didn't want the new one to go to waste. Audrey then thinks about storing these organs. If it was her father, then where would he be keeping them where the maids and cooks wouldn't stumble upon it? But Uncle's idea makes Thomas ask if they think that Jack is done to the point where he's gotten too many organs and is now giving them back. But Uncle seems to think that Jack needs one more organ, a heart. And still... 
Audrey continues to dither over the idea of telling Blackburn her father's name, because reasons. Thanks for listening to my book snark on YouTube. If you're enjoying this, please hit that subscribe button. I post a new snark video every Monday, but if you're eager for more snark, then you can check out my review of the plan. If you've already seen that, then you can head over to Tumblr for my main book snarks. And if all of that is somehow still not enough for you, then you can become my patron supporter for just $1 a month and read a bunch of bonus snarks that isn't up anywhere else. See you next week, guys!